Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. It's Thursday, February 21st, 2013. I'm Darko. All right, um, I'm gonna continue here. Zombie foreclosures. Borrowers hit with debt that won't die. Borrowers are discovering that their foreclosed homes are coming back to haunt them long after they have moved out. It says in these zombie foreclosures, borrowers move out after their bank schedules a foreclosure auction only to learn months or years later that the auction never took place or the bank never transferred the deed. Um, that's for a reason. They do that for a reason so that um, they can make their books look better than what they really are. That's what Bank of America was uh, uh, basically busted as doing. Uh, that means that the borrower will still technically own the house and is on the hook for property taxes, fees, and homeowners association dues. Many of these homes are in low-income communities where foreclosures are so difficult uh, to sell that lenders sometimes delay taking possession to save on taxes and other costs that uh, then stay under the borrower's name. Those debts can then go unpaid for years because the borrower is unaware that they owe them, further slamming their credit score and making life after foreclosure even harder. So this is an important article right here. Like I've mentioned many times, Walmart is the big indicator uh, as far as the economy and the, and the United States goes when things when, when you could expect possibly civil unrest. And all has to do with Walmart providing cheap goods to America to maintain their standard of living. You have families are adjusting to a reduced paycheck and increased gas prices, says Walmart. So it goes on here, says the reason Walmart's stock is not doing uh, too well in the pre-market is that they did not like what they found. Here's a key section. We are confident that our low prices will continue to resonate as families adjust to a reduced paycheck and increased gas prices, Simon said. We see the underlying health of the Walmart uh, United States business is sound and sales trends are similar to what we demonstrated in the last few quarters. However, February sales started slower than planned, due in large part to the delay in income tax refunds. Due to the slower sla uh, sales rate in the first few weeks of this uh, year's first quarter, we are forecasting uh, comp sales for the 13-week period to be, uh, says here, around flat. They continue to monitor the economic conditions that can impact their sales, such as rising fuel prices, changes in inflation, and the payroll tax increase. Zero Hedge goes on and writes, one can hope that all the other retailers in the U.S., retailers in the U.S., which are just as dependent on their consumers' discretionary revenue stream, which is now certifiably less, will adjust just as well. And we have, it takes a bachelor's degree to find a job as a file clerk. So it says here that, um, college degree is becoming the new high school diploma, the new minimum requirement, albeit an expensive one, for getting even the lowest level job. So this is the brave new world. It's great. College graduates are just more career oriented, said this uh, firm's managing partner. Going to college means that they're making a real commitment to their futures. They're not just looking for a paycheck. So they want to be good wage slaves. It says here, economists have referred to this phenomenon as degree inflation and it has been steadily infiltrating America's job market. It says here that across industries and geographic areas, many other jobs that didn't use to require a diploma, positions like dental hygienists, cargo agents, clerks, and claims adjusters are increasingly requiring a, a degree. It's up credentialing is pushing the less educated even further down the food chain, and it helps explain why the unemployment rate for workers with no more than high school diploma is more than twice that for workers with a bachelor's degree, 8.1% 8, 8 versus 3.7%. So besides having uh, to require more advanced skills today, it says that because so many people are going to college now, those who do not graduate are often assumed to be unambitious or less capable. So I was looking for uh, an article that was talking about how many Americans, millions of Americans that have actually left uh, just this year alone, uh, basically emigrated, renounced their U.S. citizenship, and then I found this article, 8.5 million Americans left labor force in Obama's first term. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics released jobs numbers for January Friday showing the non-farm payroll employment increased by 157,000 and the unemployment rate rose to 7.9%. Of course, that's the fudge number. But it goes on here, it's just lost in the headline numbers was another rise in the number of people not in the labor force. This number now stands at a staggering 89 million up from 80 million when Obama took office. The Pentagon informs Congress of plans to furlough 800,000 civilian workers. The Pentagon notified Congress on Wednesday that it will be furloughing its civilian workforce of 800,000 employees 
if this sequesterization goes into effect March 1st. All right, then we have unrest spreads across Egypt as Morzai pumps cash into Suez. So he's been receiving lots of millions of dollars from uh, different countries, including uh, entities such as the IMF. Unrest continued in several Egyptian governments on Tuesday as calls for civil disobedience escalated. And it says here a spread to the government of this uh, El Sheikh. The British pound falls after decision to inject money. Britain's currency, the pound, has slid against the dollar after three members of the Bank of England, including its governor, raised uh, the prospect of more quantitative easing. Surprise decision to pump an extra 25 billion pounds into the UK's struggling recovery sent the pound to a 15-month low against the euro and a cent to an 8-month low against the dollar. So I saw this headline, Killing the Dollar, G20 and IMF push for global Fed and global currency. And like I said, um, you know, I, I don't know about this. I think Obama is there to keep dollar hegemony, and I'll keep repeating that. So I see this a lot in alternative news, that they're killing the dollar. But it goes on, and it says that the well, headlines are talking about the dangers of, of an international currency war, like we were talking about. It's a trade war, which could lead to a hot war. Um, dominated news coverage, Jen reported story, is a global gathering of central bankers and finance ministers pushing forward with their plan for supersizing the International Monetary Fund. The end goal is to transform the IMF into a global Federal Reserve with the ability to flood the world with huge new volumes of loans and currency, and also, and also wield vast financial regulatory powers. The IMF's unit of account or currency, known as Special Drawing Rights, SDR, is being readied for eventual adoption as a replacement for the U.S. dollar and international transactions to lead the way towards eventual adoption of the SDR or some other designated unit as a global currency. Much in the same way the euro was foisted upon the people of Europe as a replacement of their national currencies. But for whatever it's worth, China loves the U.S. dollar again as America roars back. China's central bank has radically revised its view of U.S. economic and strategic power, predicting that the dollar will remain the world's paramount reserve currency for decades to come. The head of uh, the central bank said here that America's energy revolution, energy revolution, an export revi uh, revival has shaken up the global landscape and will lead to a stronger dollar over time. The dollar's global dominance will continue, he said. It'll anchor global payments and be supplemented by four smaller reserve currencies, the euro, the sterling, the yen, and the yuan. And China wants more oil. I think I covered this before. It's from Forbes. You can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. This is talking about if you think the gas prices are coming down this year, think again. Between supply constraints, the usual suspects in the Middle East and China, oil demand is seen hefty enough to keep prices stable uh, too high for the foreseeable future. In fact, China's oil demand is seen rising by 5% this year on the backs of an economic recovery. Barclays pointed out in a report on China energy demand back in October that improving industrial activities and new refining capacity in China are fueling the pickup in demand. It also says faster than expected economic growth could raise fuel demand uh, even higher than the market estimates if uh, car sales and property sales continue on their positive trends. This is followed by this oilprice.com article, Energy Demands on Russia Have Global Consequences. Russian oil producer uh, Rosneft said it was considering sending more, more oil to the energy-hungry Chinese economy, the world's number two oil exporter after Saudi Arabia already sent about 300 uh, was this 300,000 barrels of crude oil by pipeline to China. Taking on more crude oil would mean Asian economies would be demanding about 20% of Russia's total oil production. With Asia dominating the global economic landscape, stronger energy ties may bolster Russian President Putin's vision of tilting his economy to the east as a strengthening skill in all them. The origin of some of these energy resources, however, may have global implications. So it also estimates, of, I think most of you already are aware of this, 70% of the world's undiscovered oil reserves and 30% of undiscovered natural gas may lie beneath the Arctic Ocean. And of course, they talk about warming trends. And of course, they're not going to talk about HARP. They're not going to talk about anything else. They're not going to talk about a possible ice age, uh, why a lot of the water is being evaporated because it's going into building ice in the South Pole. They just say it's warming and global warming and climate change. Says the U.S. Uh, government has realigned some of its ambitions towards Asia as Middle East military obligations wind down, you know, for resources. Given that, the geopolitical implications of the North American oil boom and UNEP's concerns about the Arctic, Putin's emphasis 
on an eastern vector for energy development may have global implications that grow faster than the Chinese economy itself. And Russian meteor kicks up, kicks up cloud of mistrust. So it goes on here and it says, if you had to choose a single word to describe the dominant attitude in Russian society, it would be mistrust. But it goes on here and says, the world saw the meteor thanks to a dashboard camera that are so common in Russia cars, Russian cars. The U.S. publications from the New Yorker to Wire delighted in writing about the dash cam phenomenon unheard of in the U.S. or Europe. Russians use the devices because they cannot trust police, judges, insurance companies, or witnesses in case of a fender bender. But it goes on here and it says that in this case of the meter, however, cameras were not enough to overcome mistrust. Uh, one person was saying paranoia tends to be logical while life is not. Uh, also says, I don't know what I don't know about you, but I get the feeling somebody's taking me for an idiot uh, talking about this uh, whole thing uh, with this meteor being a weapon or something of the sorts. It's funny because the sociologist said that trust is higher in societies with stable and open institutional systems and lower in societies with a high level of violence, aggression, and authoritarian or totalitarian, totalitarian form, sorry, of government and repressive societies, mistrust becomes an important strategic uh, resource for social survival, success, and upward mobility, which is interesting because these, quote, uh, trust is higher in societies with stable and open institutional systems. That sounds like the United States and Europe, right? It's just a different system of control. Uh, it's funny because people have trust in these types of systems, and they're actually just as enslaved as these people living in the authoritarian or totalitarian form of government. So the only difference is that these people know, they're aware of it, where these people, these quote democracies and that, aren't. And that's kind, of, that's kind of the thing, right? That's the point to make, which is that's why these governments like in Russia and that in China are, you know, they have to be physically aggressive and hamp down on people because they're more of a threat to them. They're more of a threat to them because they're aware, they're not naive. They know that they're, you know, what their governments represent, which is not them. Whereas in these dem democratic societies, people trust them. They are not really worried about the plebes and slaves. They just keep them distracted with uh, entertainment and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and they don't really worry about uh, their power being overthrown. Oklahoma guns exempted from federal rules and bill okayed by House panel. So guns and ammunition manufactured and kept in Oklahoma would not be subject to federal laws or regulations under a bill that a House panel approved Wednesday called the Firearms Freedom Act. In Missouri, they're actually trying to pass a bill to make it illegal to pass a bill to, for gun control. Disturbing trends in our military, viewing citizens as a threat. So military, viewing citizens as a threat. But that's not the only ones. Remember that, you know, we just covered this. Is your local police department using pictures of pregnant women and children for target practice? They are. Old, old men and stuff like that. So we know they're getting ready for something. Army begins receiving chemical bio, biological shelters. The first of more than 100 uh, chemical biological protective shelters have been delivered to the U.S. Army by Smith's detection under a $40 million contract. They can also be used for homeland security operations following natural disasters, which most likely not be natural disasters. So. Snake charmed. Marines learn drinking blood may help survival. So this is not a new story. I've seen this before. This is part of these, uh, these guys are doing Operation Cobra, I think it's actually called, um, out there, Operation Cobra. And um, what's interesting about it is uh, a steward, or Janet Swerdlow talked about this, and, uh, you know, whatever. I know these guys are about survival, but at the same time, she talks about, um, she talks about how they're getting these troops more bloodthirsty and stuff like that. Uh, like kind of like you know dark forces and this is uh, although it seems to be like survival on the surface this is kind of what it has to do with so I'm just going to leave off right here and we'll continue in part four this is GGN and I'm Darko thank you